everyone, Dark of All Trades here. I've been dealing with some serious apologetics and people who, let's say, are good or at least decent communicators. They lay out their thoughts using different arguments, such as the Kalam cosmological argument, or presuppositional arguments, and even the look at the trees argument. Also, I've been introduced to my new favorite argument, the verbosity argument, patent pending. These apologists seem to just keep throwing arguments at the wall to see what sticks, and anything remotely gooey is preserved to use again to reinforce the beliefs of the people who already accept their position, but also want to sound like a big smart guy to those mean atheists if they ever run into one outside of their airtight echo chamber. That is totally what they'll say. So I wanted to take a moment and try something a bit easier to deal with. In my search for top-tier quality content that I've been responding to, I sometimes come across channels like this. And while I get the pleasure of watching this content, I think it should be shared with the world. Trigger warning, this guy's face is way too close to the camera. This guy here, who goes by Armored Christian, has a couple messages for atheists. Since they are shorts, I figured, what the heck, let's look at them both and see what he has to say. So here is a message to all atheists, dot dot dot, improper use of ellipses. So atheists, it is possible to prove God's existence because on this channel, this very channel, I've proven God 196 times. Let's be honest, I'm not going to look at every single one of your videos hoping to find one of them where you have proven God. From what I've seen, no you haven't, but maybe you have a great argument. I'm going to pause your short video here and look at your most recent proof of God. Future Dark here, in between writing this script and getting screenshots, he uploaded another video. At the time, this was his latest video. Now, back to the regular content. This one is Borrowed Time Proves God's Existence. Well, let's see one of your proofs. Conscious life, or life in general, is on borrowed time because we die. In order, in order to be on borrowed anything, there has to be a consciousness aware of the topic to be a borrowed. This is literally the whole short. This is actually a direct quote. It is everything in his proof. Now, I'm not one to casually dismiss arguments, but this has got to be the worst I have heard. To be on borrowed time is an idiom that generally means to be alive after one was expected to have died. It basically means likely to die soon. According to Writing Explained, quote, in this expression, the person has borrowed time from death. People often personify death as a man in a black hood and a black robe. The idea is that death has come to take a person away, and that person has borrowed a little more time from death to stay on Earth, end quote. A source for this is in the description. It does not, as Armward thinks it does, mean that we are literally borrowing something from his God. Time itself is not a thing that can be borrowed or loaned. We can offer our time, but that means we're giving attention to someone or something else for someone else's benefit. There doesn't seem to be a specific fallacy listed for this. If you know one, let me know in the comments. Until then, I think I'll call this one the Argumentum ad Idioma, the Appeal to Idiom. So that is one of his proofs for God. I bet they're all gems like this. If you want me to go over more of them, let me know. Until then, rather than that, let's just get back to his message for atheists. That means I know something you don't. Actually, just the opposite. It means you don't know that you're making a flawed argument and can't see the issue with it. But I can. I knew something you don't. While you know things that I don't, your arguments are not demonstrations of that. That means I know something you can't. It doesn't mean this at all. Outside of your subjective personal experiences, what could you possibly know that I can't know? If it is something to do with what exists in reality, then you should be able to show it. But you actually can't. That means I know something you can't do but claim to. And what an arrogant position to hold. This is very much like the I know this thing and you don't. That means I'm smarter than you position. It is immature at best. Do better. That means I know something. You know 196 postulations that don't show a God exists. So yes? Did someone tell you that you know literally nothing about anything? Is this some form of overcompensation? Now drop your pride, drop your ego, and understand that you're wrong, and you cannot understand because you're stupid. Oh, okay then. From just sounding arrogant to name-calling, totally a good look. Keep doing that. I hear the more you name-call, the more correct your argument becomes. 
Either that or you don't want to try to understand. I just dissected one of your so-called proofs and understand it clearly. It is just not correct. Would you like it if someone said the same thing to you here? It means I know something you don't. It means I know something you can't. It means I know something. Drop your pride and your ego. You either can't understand that because you're stupid or you don't want to try to understand. Does that sound good to you, buddy? I don't know what your goal was with this, but you definitely pushed people away, even some on your side of the beliefs. Being disrespectful is a good way to lose things, especially arguments. <laughs> you think the burden of proof is on us when it's on you too? Well, at least you admit the burden is on you. That is a start. However, for the overwhelming majority of atheists, there is no burden on them for the God claim. Not accepting your garbage does not adopt a burden of proof, and simply because you are convinced by your terrible arguments does not make it up to anyone else to disprove them. For my burden, I will happily meet it and have put forth arguments against your God. There are countless reasons why the biblical God doesn't exist. An argumentum ad idioma isn't going to cut it. And that's because you're interested in knowledge. The desire for knowledge and understanding does not necessitate a burden of proof. If I want to learn about sharks, I don't adopt a burden of proof, ever. I only adopt a burden of proof when I make a positive claim. How is that not the derivative of being a human being? Sorry, but goodbye. Are you returning to your home planet now? That's the end of the first one. But he made a part two, so let's look at that one. God is the creator of all evil. And that is one of the only reasons why I want him punished for the rest of his goddamn eternal life. Starting off strong here, though I think you're using life in a different way than most educated people would, perhaps you mean existence? Then again, by doing this, you're no better than he is, right? You are advocating for an eternal punishment. Some may argue that his crime is eternal as well, and that's a discussion for another time. But I'm overthinking this. You were saying? In livid pain, such as the stars, lightning, etc., do you think your God can feel pain? Do you think your God has a physical body with some sort of pain receptors? This is such a weird statement. I can accept his creation of love though, which is the only reason I wish to be a friend to him. You want him punished for the rest of his eternal life with pain, but he made love exist in the world, so you also want to be a friend to him? You're a bit all over the map here. You actively want someone you consider a friend to be in eternal pain. I am glad I'm not your friend. But he's also going to be at the leisure of my request to go into hell. Which is going to be often. What exactly does this mean? Anybody? Are you saying that a god is going to go to hell at your request? Is it that he is going to let you go to hell at your request whenever you feel like it? But here's that arrogance again. Do you think you can just tell your God what to do and he'll just do it? Do you think that you have power over the being you think made everything from love and evil to heaven, hell, and the entire universe? I don't think so. I have to decipher English from English language learners as part of my job, and this is structured exactly like what the weakest skilled people in my class would write. Your meaning is unclear. Rewrite and try again. A message indeed. That's it? That's your message to atheists? What are you trying to convey here? Let me try to summarize both of these shorts into their main points. Part 1. He has proven God 196 times on his channel. He knows something and something that atheists don't. Atheists are either stupid or don't want to try to understand. Both theists and atheists have a burden of proof. Part 2. God made evil and he wants God to be punished eternally for that. Part or all of that punishment should involve pain to God. God made love, and that is the only reason he wants to be friends with God. God will let me go to hell and back anytime I want, and it will be often. I don't really have anything else to say about this. I guess there's a black and white fallacy in the idea that atheists are either stupid or don't want to try to understand. He isn't really making points I can adequately address other than these few points. All in all, he comes off as condescending and arrogant. His message seems to be, I prove God a bunch, therefore I'm smarter than you. God made evil and I want him punished. But he also made love, so I want to be his friend too. God will do what I tell him because reasons. That is all I was able to glean from these shorts. So what about you? 
What do you think? How did you receive this message as an atheist? If you're not an atheist, do you think Armored Christian is a good spokesperson for your religion? Do you agree with what he's saying here? Let me know in the comments below. Now, how am I supposed to end this cluster? Um, the burden of the video is on me, but the burden to like it is on you, so hit the like button. Though you can express your love for this content by subscribing, and that makes us friends? On top of that, you can support the channel and all of the over 196 debunked arguments on it for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com backslash darkofalltrades. And as always, please keep learning.